Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So as a friend requested in the last video, we will be making a helicopter animation. So stick to the end because I will be also showing you a bonus tip to make this grass motion. So with no further ado, let's dive in. So once you open the file I've sent in the description, you will find these three objects. We, are the, we have the ground, the helicopter, and these three grasses that we will be adding as additional details to the ground. And we will animate the wind effect of the helicopter as well. So this is our helicopter and it is set, it is parented to an empty. So the first thing we will do is that we will go to the helicopter armature uh, that is controlling the Z position and uh, like the helicopter rolling. We will go to frame 1 and set a keyframe, then move to frame 5 and type a uh, Z location to 360, then press I to add a keyframe again. Now this is what we get, but we want uh, like a repetitive cycles. So we'll just go to graph editor, press the Z Euler rotation and add a modifier, which will be the cycles. We will press the before mode count to one so that we have nothing before the animation start. We have no cycles going on before the animation starts. And for the after mode count, we will set this to 16 or you can just leave it at zero because it is just going to end there. And now we will go back and do the same thing, but this time for the back uh, helicopter, the, the small one. I will just go select the armature that is controlling the movement, go to frame 1, and press I to insert a keyframe, go to 5, frame 5, and then I will set the Y, I will control the Y position in this one, and set it to 720 degrees, because I want like to, since it is a small one, we want it to look more rolling. And I will go to the graph editor and go to the ZY Euler rotation. Then of course I'll add the same modifier which is the cycles. Press the first count to 1 and the last one to 16 or again you can just leave it to 0. So this is what we get. You can also control this by going to the restrict fra frame range and control where you want these cycles to end. But I just want to stay with the count because it just stops the when once the animation actually stops it doesn't cut the animation uh to two now i will start animating the motion of an helicopter for this we will just press a keyframe just insert i to insert a keyframe and we will go to add another modifier but this time we will not add the cycles we will add another one which is called the noise so i will go to like the x Euler rotation and then add noise i will set the scale to 15 and the strength to maybe 0.6 now this is what's going on you can set this to something lower or more depending on how much you want it but for this one i will restrict a frame range at the end and i will make it stop once the helicopter will land which is in my case at frame 100. I will do the same thing to the Euler rotation at the scale of 15 but the strength it will be lower to 0.2 and of course the same thing we will set the end frame to 100. Now the helicopter motion is ready. What is left is to add the path animation, which is exactly what we will be doing right now. So I will just go back to frame zero and shift A, then add an empty, but this time a sphere. I will just scale it up so that we can see it. And yeah, until it looks like they're below the helicopter. So I'm just going to like, select all the objects of the helicopter then the empty then press uh, ctrl p to con to parent uh, parent it all so that we can like control the 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 position of the helicopter to the empty now to create that animation i'm going to insert some values myself until i get the right like uh, the right animation and after like more some tweaks in the values i just came up with this animation and i will exactly show you the values that i used for each keyframe so let's go back to frame zero these are the keyframe i used and then 
to frame 40 these are the ones i used again and to frame 80 where it's almost landing so you can see like it has a rotation on the y-axis because that's how it usually helicopters land and then the last one the landing in the 100 frame and these are the values i used for that now we will just go and tweak some of the render settings let's go to cycles and set the samples to 200 or more i'll just go with these with the with no denoise and for the color management you will go there and select the view transform to filmic and the look to high contrast. We will go to the output and uh, make the Y resolution to 800 so that we can have the cinematic look. Now just enable the camera you already have in your file and you should get something like this. Now we will just go and add some particle system as an additional detail to this video and to this animation. So just press plus and go to hair. Then set the advanced button and set the number to 5000. And let's make the seed 15 because we have a variety of grass objects. And for the length, I will make it 1.7. And it will change once we add our grass collection. So just go to the render tab and then select collection instead of path. Then you will go and select our collection, which will be grass in my case. So this is how it looks like right now, but we still need to add some more effects to add some real realism to this. I'm just going to set the numbers a little lower so that I can perform better uh, with this uh, in this animation in the viewport render. And for some additional details for this animation, we will just recreate this grass motion that we have because of the wind that the helicopter is given. So we just have this strong uh, motion and movement of the grass. But first of all, let's just set up the scale of this grass. Let's go back to the particle system and go to render, set the scale to 0.1 and the scale randomness to 1. Now we will just go select the cursor. Let's just hide the ground and we will set the cursor right in the middle of the helicopter so that now whenever we add something it will have the cursor as its origin. Let's add a force field. Now let's just select, let's just hide the ground. And just so that I can see better the glass I will go to material and set it to random. So now whenever we move this force field the grass is already moving. So now just select the empty, control P and parent it. So that now whenever the helicopter is moving or the empty is moving, the forest field is moving as well. Now I will just go and set the strength to 3 and the noise amount to 2000 and let's make the seed 75. We will of course add some max distance so that we can determine how much, what is the distance of the grass it will be affected by the wind of the helicopter. I will make it something like this, uh, 11.3, or just set it to 11. So you can already see something realistic happening here, but we still need one more thing to add. We will again select the empty and add another force field, but this one we will select turbulence. Now let's just select these turbulence force field and select the empty and again control P and parent it together. Now let's go to the turbulence force field we added and let's set the strength to 4000. And let's make the noise 1200 and the C to 75. Now I will again set a max distance, but I want to make it slightly bigger than the previous one we set for the force field. And set it to a value of 14.2. Now if we press play, this is what the result we get. But let's just go back to the first force field. Let's just go to frame 100 and go to strength. And press I to insert a keyframe. Now let's go to the graph editor. And we will be inserting a modifier to this one. Let's go to modifiers and insert a noise modifier. We will set the scale to something around um, 13.3 and the strength to 1.4. 
So now that we're done with the animation, let's go add just some minor details so that we can make this animation actually present to the eyes. So I will increase these numbers because it will not be playing the animation anymore. I will just now take care of the whole shading of the scene. And now I will go to the compositor. Then we will just add, make sure you set use notes. And I will set for color ramp, color balance. Let's insert this right between the input and the outputs. Okay, so here you go. Let's just go to the render viewport so that we are we see what we're actually doing with the compositor. And to, to make sure you're able to see the adjustments you're making through the compositor, go to this flash over here. Usually it's over here, but in this file, I just like, I changed the customization of this bar. So you just go to this flash and make sure you have the compositor checked on always. It's on default checked on disabled, but you need to make sure you have it on always. So now I will go to the first value, which is the left value. Let me zoom in so that you can see what are the values I'm using. And I will use this hex value. As you can see, it's a little bit pinkish, but slightly light. And you will now go to the gamma value. Oh, again, I'm just going to press the hex value, tag F74F. And let's go tweak the gain value as well. Again, tag, sorry, tag uh, FFF9F7. And we're not done yet. We will still add one more node just to keep make this even more interesting. Now, as you can see, this has kind of a yellowish effect. And I would like to add like a sun, Mm, sun effects so I'll simply just add a glare node here it is glare and that will set the type to fog glow now mix controls how much we want the scene to be blending with the the fog glow so I will just set the mix to one the to point one and the threshold to 1.8 and the size to 9. So this is the final result of the render. Now let's just play the whole animation, but I will just go back to the viewport shading and play the animation. Let's go back to frame 0 and let's play it. And I will go and set this to texture. And I might also tweak the camera position as well to see the overall gra grass. Okay, so it's looking cool. You might as well adjust the camera position to another angle so that you can see things from a better perspective. And you might also like set it a little bit high or move it on the y on the y axis so that you can see it even when at the beginning of the animation it's up, you can see it all from here. Like you just move it all here. I like could just move it like that. You can treat the camera position as you'd like and it's up to you. So this was the big, the end of the video. I really do hope you, you've you learned from this and uh, you've learned how to make such type of animations. Anyways, I hope you've learned uh, so much from this video and you've got to make your own animation. And uh, just if you like, uh, this video or wanted to see more of it make sure to like and subscribe the video and uh, to see the coming ones as well see you soon